We're now going to demonstrate the popliteal approach to the sciatic nerve block. I've got my patient in the lateral position with a blanket or a uh, towel between the knees to support them. Uh, I'm going to use a high frequency linear probe with the virtual convex function on and I'm initially going to start at the popliteal fossa. I'm going to start at the popliteal fossa and increase and reduce the pressure. You'll see right at the bottom of the screen here we've got a pulsatile structure which is the popliteal artery and just above that you can just see it coming into screen there is the popliteal vein. If I put the colour Doppler on I can highlight the vein by squeezing the calf. As I squeeze the calf you'll see the vein blush. If I increase the pressure over there you see the artery right underneath. There's a popliteal artery. So let's remove the colour Doppler now. Um, you will notice that these ner or the nerves at this um, part of the body are extremely anisotropic which means if your ultrasound beam does not hit the target at 90 degrees you won't see it. So I'm going to just rotate and change the direction. I'm going to use tilt to change the direction of the probe and hopefully what is evident to you is there are two structures on the screen right now. There's a structure over here which is lateral. If I tilt the probe off that's the lateral aspect and there's a structure over here which is medial and that's the medial aspect uh, of the probe. And what I want to demonstrate is that when you are at the popliteal fossa the sciatic nerve in most cases has already bifurcated into two components, the common fibula or the common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve. So we'd, we want to block them ide ideally when they're at one structure. So I'm going to slide the probe north, maintaining my orientation as such to my model so that I can get a good view. So I'm using this tilt function, so the tail of the probe is moving up and down. I'm using this tilt function so I can get a nice view of those structures at all time and often you'll identify a nice view of the nerve by directing the beam in a planter direction. So at this point you just see these two structures, the common fibula, the common perineal and the tibial nerve coming together and as they come together they join together in a, in a common sheath. We call that sheath the circumneurium or the paraneurium. So at this point you can just see the two nerves as separate structures. Here's the common fibula, the common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve and there's a surrounding paraneurium or circumneurium. So if you're going to perform a popliteal approach to the sciatic nerve you can either choose to put local anesthetic around this whole structure that, where they've got the two components um, of the sciatic nerve or you can aim to put your local anesthetic between the two structures to so actually pierce that common perineurium taking care that you don't actually uh, put your needle anywhere into the nerve structures. If you look on the lateral aspect of the probe over here, this is the biceps femoris muscle and medial to it you've got the, sem the muscles of semitendinosus and semimembranosus. So laterally biceps femoris, medially semitendinosus and semimembranosus, the common fibular nerve or the common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve and as I scan up the leg you'll see the two nerves have joined at this point to form one structure which you can surround. As I keep sliding up the leg you can see actually a very classical nerve appearance, this honeycomb appearance surrounded by common sheath there and as I scan down the leg you see the nerves separate very beautifully. I'll try and keep it so it's orientated in the centre of the screen. So there the two nerve separate and here they, they come together. So this would be a good place to, to block the nerve and if you were going to um, do your nerve block here you've got two options. You can either come in plane where you bring your needle in from the lateral aspect of the screen from this direction aiming to put local anesthetic above and below it avoiding the popliteal vein and artery that lie below it or you can aim to bring your needle in out of plane. So if you bring your needle in out of plane like doing a central line you'll see the dot of your needle come down here of course you want to pop your needle between the two structures not into either of them. So that is the popliteal approach to the sciatic nerve and you can see if you apply the right pressure and the right angulation you can actually follow that nerve relatively proximally up the thigh. So there we go you've got the sciatic nerve in a slightly more proximal location and as we slide distally it comes more towards the surface. It's an anisotropic nerve so change in the tilt of the probe is really important plant angulation makes it easier. There's a little trick to help identify the nerve called the seesaw movement. So if you move the leg up and down you'll see the two components of the nerve move on each other. You can see the tibial nerve there rotating as I move the nerve up and down. So there you go, that's the popliteal approach to the sciatic nerve.